So welcome. In this exercise, I'm going to go through another powerful function of Excel, which is the solver. And we are going to use uh, a scenario to learn the potency and the power of using the solver, OK? And this solver is one of the most powerful tools in Excel. It's also a, a logic tool in Excel used for calculating what if scenarios, all right? So at the end of this task, we'll be able to use the what if scenario manager. So solver can be used for multiple uh, data uh, evaluation on Excel, all right? We can use it to generate reports, we can use it for scenario management. We can also use it in the place of go seek, and I'm going to tell you why. We can use it to print scenarios, and for solver, it can take more variables and as well constraints as compared to go seek. Go seek just have one input, one output, but for solver solution, you can have several variables whereby you can juggle with multiple values, all right, for combination of optimum or target result, all right? So you can use it to determine your most profitable mix of products, staff scheduling to minimize waste, allocate capital or working capital to its most profitable use, okay? But it also has its own limitation because you can specify up to, but not more than 200 variables, okay? And you can say solver is the most powerful analytic tool in Excel, okay? We can use it to solve multiple mathematical uh, equations and arrive at what we call our optimal or target values. So this is a very, a uh, basic tool for optimization and equation solving, but it also has its own limitation. Range of values of problems that it can solve is limited, all right? Then complex problems may, be, may have more than one solution, right? Whereas solver will now take, provide the best given the range of values, okay? Then for us to be able to use solver effectively, understanding of the nature of problem that you're about to solve is important. So if you don't have a good knowledge of the product you're about to solve, then that will be a challenge. So next we have installation guide for solver. So how do you install solver? You go to your file tab under Excel options, you have add-ons, you click on that, then you click on Excel add-ons, you click on go. Once you click on go, you are going to see this um, tab, then you click on solver add-on and you click OK, and automatically you have solver on your, on your um, tab. As for me, I have solver, and this is the question you want to quickly use solver to solve. That we are going to do very fast now. So permit me to move over to my Excel sheet. So let me make it bigger so that we can see clearly what I'm working on. So I'm going to start by reproducing the table we have before we now put in the solver. So I have staff scheduling, scheduling new branch, okay? So here we have what we call the rotor. We have the rest days. We have employee. Employee per rotor. Then 
under my YouTube. I have Monday, Tuesday. Then you can come here as well. Highlight both. Go to the lower right corner. Drag it down, and it will give you value. Okay. Centralize. There's nothing here, so make it smaller and I make this bigger. So we have that. So we have one, two, three, four, five. The rest of these. Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday. So centralize. So employee parameter for now is zero. All right. We have zero, zero, one, 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 one. So I'm just trying to populate this. This is supposed to be zero as well. One zero zero. And there we have it. So underneath here we have total days. Right. And we now have this column for staff allocated. Okay, so let me look at my table. What next? Okay, so at this point, I have what we call uh, staff needed, which is the project need. Staff needed per day. Right, so here we have 14. We need 14 staff on this rotation, then 14 staff here, then 16, 17, 20, 22. Okay, then on my B, we have average pay per day. All right. Then I want to keep it in Naira. So 
a party wages deal a week for now is zero okay so we are fully set up our table fully set up our table now we are going to solve using solver okay so what we are going what we want to achieve we want to achieve three things the first thing we want to achieve is number of employees per rotation okay that's the first one the staff allocated per day that also we want to get then total bill per week. Okay, so we're going to use just one uh, iteration to get all this out. Okay, so how do we get that? If you go back to your manual, you say what we need to do. So you say we should set, we need to calculate the sum total I've said here of C5 to C9 and ensure that what we have here from E11 to J11 does not go beyond what is needed here. Okay, so we've done the first task. If you go back to your book, you say we should build as we have, we have built that. We should set C10 as a sum of C9. So we'll come to C10, set it as a sum of c5 to c9 i use my auto sum and I press enter so we have that already let's give it its own unique color and centralize it then you should set c16 to the product of c10 and c15 so this is our c16 we say equals to so you can see this cell times this all right to give you an answer or you can come here and still say equals to product all right you tap then you click this cell command this cell you still get the same answer all right so we've done that then four we are to calculate the number of staff working on each day hmm? So how do we achieve that? So he said you need to multiply column C, this, by the staff on each rotation in column E, which indicates whether this rotation is working or not. Hence for Monday, this is Monday, and at this point, we are going to say C5 multiply, C5 multiply by this, then in addition to this, this is C6 multiplied by E6, all right? Then we'll continue like that till when we get to the last rotation, which is this place. So let's get to work. So equals to C5 times E5 hmm? plus C6 times E6 plus C7 times E7 plus C8 times C9 plus C9 times E9, then you say equals to. That's what we've done. So we are supposed to do the same thing for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll say employee per rotation times um, the spread out for those working and not working on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So if you notice, the employee per rotation is constant. So I can come back to my first expression 
and I make C5, C6, C7, C8, C9 absolute so that I can just drag along this line and it will give me the same equivalent for the other cells. So how do I make, I say, function F4. This is not absolute, meaning that it's constant. No matter how I drag it, my C5 will be kept absolute. And it will not change. I come to C6 and I say function F4. I come to C7, function F4. Come to C8, function F4. C9 function F4 and I press enter. So once that is done, I go to the lower right corner and I drag. It looks like nothing has changed, but if you come here and you click, you will see this has been multiplied by the correspondence on Tuesday. This has been multiplied by the correspondence on Wednesday. The employment partition has been multiplied by Correspondent on Thursday are the same thing for Friday and Saturday. So we are done with that. So once that is done, I can go to my data tab. All right. Under analysis, you will see my solver. So I click on solver. All right. So I'm going to populate this as you have in the picture over there. So my set target cell. So I come start set objective or set target cell. That's my C16, which is this. I want to set that, okay? To get a value, a maximum value, all right? By changing, next I have maximum and minimum. I click minimum. I want to get the minimum wages that I'm going to pay these people by changing what range of sales, employer's qualification. So I'll come here and I click on employer qualification from Monday to Saturday. Be careful not to add the total to it. I go back, that's C5 to C9. All right. Then what constraints do I want? I want to add a constraint. And my first constraint will be that my first constraint will be that my number of staff for each day must be greater than or equals to zero. So it's asking me for cell reference. So I'll come here, click this. I say this is greater or equals to sorry. I don't want a negative answer, and I say okay. So you see, I have that greater or equals to zero. Then the next constraint is anything I have in here should be E11, okay? Should be greater or equals to what I have here. I don't want to have anything short because the number of staff required a day as a minimum is this. So I'll say add, then I'll say constraint, come here, highlight this, everything, and go back. So that is E11 to J11 to be greater or equals to, and I come here and highlight this. Then I say, okay. So there we have our two constraints. The first one is everything in here must be greater or equal to zero. I don't want a negative. And secondly, staff allocated per day must be greater or equal to staff needed per day. Once you have that, then you click on solve. Then you can see automatically that I now have staff per day. All right, and I have for each day you can see for staff power rotation has changed to 9.5, 3, 7.5, 4.5. Since I don't want uh, 
I don't want this uh, uh, decimal point, I want whole number. I can make everything here a whole number. But before that, Excel is asking me, do I want to keep sober value or restore back? I'll say keep sober value, okay. So I'll come here and highlight. Then I go to my home and I reduce index. So there I have it. So I can click on this again and press enter. Okay, so we have whole number. So it's telling me that for each rotation, for rotation one, we have 10 persons needed, rotation two, three, eight, two, and five. This is the minimum number of persons we can have. And as you can see over here, all these numbers are equal to or greater than staff needed. Okay, and now we have the minimum wage that you can pay them to be 795 for working for 30 days. So we we'll just use one function to solve up to get different solutions out, okay? So at this point, let me just make my, uh, let me make my work a little bit beautiful because we're done. Then add some borders, all right? And our work is ready. Yes, so there you have it. So that is how to use the solver, okay? To solve uh, complex equations of Excel. Thank you.